Good morning. Hello, hello. Oh, it's so good to see all of you here. Thank you for joining me. We're going to make the prettiest, prettiest card with one of the prettiest, prettiest colors Stampin' Up! has ever put out called Seaside Spray. Totally my favorite color. If I could take my phone off its little handle and just like flip it around, I'd show you my, my phone case because it's got that color in it and I just love that color. And I, and I bought a purse that, that's that color too, a cute little Kate Spade purse that I'm going to take to Hawaii with me. I love that color. Good morning, good morning. Okay, you know what? I'm trying to think. Is there anything I need to cover before we flip the camera down? I don't think so. I think we can get into this pretty quickly. Okay, so this is the card we're going to make, and it's so pretty. So let me turn the camera down. I'll show you all the supplies we're using and we will recreate this beauty. All right, so here we go. Here are all the supplies. Here's a close up of the card again so you can get a good idea of what that looks like. And then this is the inside panel. So elegant, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, that True Love Designer Series paper, truly, truly one of my favorites out of the mini catalog that just came out here in January and ends the end of June. And then we have the fabulous Seaside Spray Ribbon, which is an accent on this card. There's just a little bit of crumb cake in between the scalloped parts of the ribbon. Um, and one thing, I don't know if you guys realize this, but if you're making a more masculine card, did you know that you can actually, let me see if I can find, I'm just going to throw this up here. If you want to do more of a masculine wrap, you can totally hide the color on this by using the reverse side of the ribbon so that it looks like this. Isn't that great? So this ribbon is actually kind of two-sided ribbon, so it's really great for a lot of different uses. And I think people just forget about that. They're thinking, oh, well, you know, I don't want to put this little baby blue color on a masculine card, but you can. You can just flip it over and use this side of it. So just something to keep in mind when you order the scalloped linen ribbon from Stampin' Up! Uh, let's see. So we're going to set that aside. And again, that Seaside Spray color is going to retire. I did get the in-color markers, the 2019-21 in-color markers. And, you know, I use Stampin' Blends quite often, but they're not always the greatest when it comes to blending on designer series paper. So sometimes I revert to using my markers when I'm coloring designer series paper, and that is the case today. And so I am using the in-color markers, which again will be retiring, I believe the end of May is the last chance to get those. And if you have the ink pads, but you don't have the ink refills, I'd get those ink refills ASAP because they're starting to go low on inventory. We'll also be using just a touch of crumb cake and we will be using pear pizzazz. So these are the markers. This is from the Subtles marker pack and this one is from the Neutrals marker pack. I always love to get the markers along with my, my inks in that particular color family. We're going to use something else that will be retiring really soon, and that is the Butterfly Gems. So we'll be using these pretty um, seaside spray butterflies. And this is all I have left. I barely have enough left to make this card. So the giveaways that I'll do next week... Um, yeah, you'll probably, I don't know what you'll get, because look at how low I am on ribbon. I don't even think I can get two yards out of here. So it's probably going to be a surprise gift, because I don't even know what I can give you. All my supplies are running low, but it's that time of year when that happens. Okay, so we're going to set these aside. Then I'm going to go over the colors that we're using. So isn't this a pretty rainbow of colors here? So we've got our basic black, we've got a touch of crumb cake, a touch of pear pizzazz, basic white, and then again, this beautiful, gorgeous color that we'll be using called Seaside Spray. And this is the cardstock for that. We'll use the Happy Thoughts stamp set. You guys have seen me use this repeatedly. It's, it's a fabulous sentiment set. If you are just um, wanting to make a really quick card and you just need a sentiment for it, like this particular card, because really what it is is just designer series paper and then you're popping a sentiment on it. So you aren't even really using stamped images. So it's quite a different concept. 
So then we are also going to use the True Love Designer Series paper again. This is something that you've seen over and over since the start of this mini catalog. I love it. I even have more cards up my sleeve that I want to share that use it. It's just it's just so lovely. And so we're going to be using these big, big flowers here. And we're also going to use these stripes over here. And finally, we've got a couple of items from the Tasteful, uh, I think it's the, oh, I'm not even going to try to remember the name. So let me just share what we're using. We're going to be using, and I have it right here, the Tasteful Texture 3D Embossing Folder. These are from the annual catalog. And we're also going to use the, oh, I don't have it written down here, but I think it's the Tasteful Labels Dies. I think that's what it's called, Tasteful Labels Dies. And you've seen me, and you know I love this one. I use this one all the time. So we're going to do a couple of different ones today. We're going to use this one with the cool uh, little cutout corners, and it's going to be layered over this one. So just something a little different because, you know, I don't often step out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to do it for you today and use those different labels from Tasteful Labels. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do is a bunch of layering up. So I've got my, my panels all ready for layering. So the first panel that we're going to layer onto is the gorgeous color Seaside Spray. This is cardstock cut at four by five and a quarter. And we are going to use multi-purpose liquid glue to do this fairly quickly. The next layer is our designer series paper. Again, we're using that striped black and white version from True Love Designer Series paper. It's cut at three and three fourths by five inches. And we're gonna flip that over and we're gonna just put some, a little line of glue all the way around on both of these panels. And then we're just gonna center it into the seaside spray panels. So I'm gonna set this on here. And I can just wiggle that into place until all four borders are nice and even. I have such a busy day today. It's amazing I'm even on here. I have my demo meeting tonight and I just got done uh, with all of the recognition cards that I sent to my downline for their accomplishments from the month before. Last month, we had 39 people in our group recognized. You guys, this month, it's up to 45. My group is amazing. They're going crazy. So the Creative Crafters Stamping to Share group is really a fun place to be. So if you're considering becoming a demonstrator, oh, and you're my customer, let's get started. Let's, let's give it a try. There's never a bad time to join Stampin' Up. It's always a good time to join Stampin' Up. One more thing we're going to do here before we get too far along is we're going to add a strip of Whisper White that has been run through the Tasteful Textures 3D embossing folder. So again, these panels are two inches by five inches, so I was able to run them through at the same time. Just set them right on here, and then you flip it down and run it through your stamp and cut and emboss machine. Yeah, I love that. And if you're like me and you have trouble remembering things, just this is what I do. I just take off the little label that comes on the packaging and I put it down with packing tape on the back side so that when I'm doing a Facebook Live, I don't forget the name. I need to do that with everything, but I don't because I, I sometimes forget. But I did have it down for that one, so it was kind of cool. Then you're just going to put these right smack dab in the center. So again, I'm just going to add some multi-purpose liquid glue to the back. And we will center this right into the center of this panel. So, so far, everything's pretty easy, right? Nothing too hard. Everybody can manage this. All right, so that one's pretty centered in. Then we'll go ahead and we'll do this one. I like easy, elegant cards. You've probably noticed that about me. I don't like to do anything too hard. Um, I do love layering, though. Layering is really easy because it's just it's just cutting out different sizes of paper and layering it up. So that's really fun. And layers do make a more elegant card. All right, so we've got these smack dab in the middle. Everything's middle, middle, middle. So let's do some more middle. Let's add some ribbon to the middle. So here we've got some of that beautiful seaside spray ribbon. So we're gonna cut it just a tad, just a tad bigger than our panel. 
And these will be my giveaways next week. So how do you get into the giveaway? So easy. Those of you that have been here through the years, you know that this is easy. You can share it on your timeline and uh, come back here and let me know you've shared it. Or just comment. Just comment and let me know where you're watching from. We have people that watch actually from all over the world. And it's really kind of fun for me when I go back through the comments and see where everybody is from. So thank you so much for doing that. That really helps me grow my business. All right, so now, as you can see, I'm just using good old fashioned scotch tape to secure this um, beautiful ribbon. Whoops, I've got butterfingers this morning. To secure this ribbon around the back. And that's all there is to it. There we go. All done. What is the next step? Well, there's a few more layers we can put on this panel. So what would those layers be? Well, let's take a look. One of the things we're going to need to do is cut into this beautiful sheet of paper. So these are all the different flowers that you can get in one of those 12 by 12 sheets of paper. So the, the um, let me find my sample. So this one was so easy because I didn't have to cut out anything except the actual image. So there's five, let me hold it up to the camera. There's five of these in every sheet of 12 by 12 designer series paper. So you'll be able to get five of those images. However, that leaves quite a bit of flowers that you haven't cut into. So let me show you something else. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm here, I'm just working. <laughs> I'm working off camera. All right, so let me show you something else. Get all this out of the way. You can, you can individually cut out some flowers and get more use out of that designer series paper than just five cutouts. You can actually increase that to 10 cutouts when you do some layering. So for example, you can cut out this little guy, which is this flower right here. I'll hold it up so you can see. This flower right here can be cut out individually. So that adds another five to your total of what you can get out of a designer series paper. So what I've been able to figure out is you can get about 10 flowers from each designer series paper. And then this one, this one is from a three pack. So if you just cut out, did I do that right? I think so, nope, it's not that one. Hold on, oh it is. So there's this one set of flowers that has like this long, this long little bud coming out of it. Is that the one? Oh my gosh, that's not the one either. Give me a second, I know it's here somewhere. Oh, here it is, nope, that's not it. What the heck, it disappeared on me. Well, you know what? Maybe what I did is I went around the edge and found some little edgelets, because look at this one. This one is just on the edge, so I cut that one out from the edge. But I'm pretty sure some of these other ones would work too. Here's another one that's just sitting on the edge. So there's another one you could take from the edge. Um, I don't know, I just had a bunch of scraps that I was working with. Oh yeah, here's another one that's sitting on the edge. So you can take those flowers out of the edge and pair them up with this flower here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to um, do a little layering. So when I put it on my card, ultimately it's going to look like this, which is not that much different than the one that's get that gets cut out complete. Do you see that? I just want to show you that you can make more flowers than just cutting out those whole pieces. All right, so how do we, so we need to color this, right? So as I mentioned before, we're going to use some markers. So I'm going to set this, this one aside because this one has got all the colors we're going to need to color it. We are going to need our pear pizzazz on the leaves. We're going to need the seaside spray on the flower. And then we'll also use the crumb cake on the flower. So if you open it up to the brush side, it's just really easy to do the crumb cake. You just kind of, you know, lightly go over the top. You don't need to cover every single little speck. So let me show you really up close. I don't know if I'm getting this in the camera or not. It takes so long for my iPad to catch up. 
But if you just leave a few of them open, it sort of looks like the sun hitting it. I love that. Okay, so then, so so don't don't feel like you have to color the whole thing in is what I'm saying. Just lightly go over the top, but leave some openness in it. Then uh, take the seaside spray, and again, we're just going to use the brush end, and we can actually go in here, and you're just bringing a little color up along these veins. So wherever there's little hash marks on the flower, that's where you want to color. And you've all seen me do that before. So that's pretty easy. And you're just doing it with your marker. So I'm not even going to do the whole thing. I did pre-color some of these in advance. And then with the, um, what's this one called again? Pear pizzazz. Then take the pear pizzazz, do the exact same thing on the leaves. So just go in and you're just barely, barely touching it because you want to leave a lot of openness in this. So I'll hold this up to the camera. See, you're just, you're just leaving so much open and that's kind of how it's going to look. So now let me show you pieces that I've already colored. So I've got this one colored. That's just a cutout of a flower that was along the edge. I've got this one colored. And then I took, then this one is a full cutout that I've already colored because we're making two cards for two giveaways. So we're going to set these two together because we want that to be together when we put it on our cards. So the best way to do that is line it up where you think it looks really pretty. I think that looks pretty right like that. So then I'm just going to flip it over and I will put some scotch tape on the back. And it's ready to go. So those are the two flowers we're going to put onto our card. Then we need to get our sentiments ready. So I have pre I even pre-cut an extra this time so I wouldn't have to get up, go across the room, recut like I did in the last video. Got my extra one in case I goof up. And I've got my happy birthday right here. And I'm using Stays On Ink today. I like Stays On because it's a really black black. And I won't use stays on on photopolymer, but when I'm using red rubber, then then the stays on comes out. You might have also noticed that about me. Like, like, like stays on. It's just so black. All right. So then, what you're gonna do? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna I might even have to take this out of the picture so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Oh, it's so hard for me to see this because I I know I need to get this straight. Okay. Oh, it turned out perfect. I'm going to do another one. I'm very sorry, but I have to take this out of the picture so I can get my head over it. Because this is just one of those that I need to get straight because I'm doing it as a giveaway. This is going to you guys. So I want it to be perfect. Perfect. All right. I didn't even need my extra piece. Generally, if I cut an extra piece, I don't need the extra piece. If I don't have the extra piece cut, then yeah, then I need an extra piece. How do you explain that? All right, and then we have some more cutouts here. I don't know why I did an extra piece of this one. We can put that aside. Okay, so here's our basic black, another label. So we're just gonna layer this up. So I'm going to take my stamp and seal and I'm gonna put down, I'm gonna put down a little bit right on that black layer. And then, I am going to take the happy birthday. Again, I may have to bring this a little closer so I can get right over the top of it. But what you're trying to do is get the top, the bottom, the right, and the left all even. And that's kind of hard to do unless you have your head right over the top of it. But there's one. Now I'll do the other one. My husband is still on his conference call. My gosh, this has got to be one of the longest calls in history. Because I swear I was upstairs at 8 o'clock getting coffee. Or was it 7.30? I don't know. I, I had coffee at one point today, but I didn't get my second cup. And he's still on the phone. I can hear his little voice rumbling up there. Oh, anyway, we will survive. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip these over and we are going to go ahead and put these on. You know what? Let's not do that yet. Let's just set all this aside. Let's get our card base going here. You're probably wondering what the heck are we even putting this on? We're going to put it on some basic black cardstock, which I have prepped. It's four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored at five and a half. And I get so many comments now because I've started talking about this. Everyone's so confused about folding. So now I'm going to explain it one more time as I've even had a couple of messages. So you see that there's a valley side and a mountain side. And I've, I always have been told, and I looked it up on a professional website that does like folding documents for their business. And they even said, you have to fold towards the mountain. So wherever that mountain part is, that's the part you fold into. So to make it easy to remember, just remember, fold towards the mountain. So I find that little mountain part, and that's what I'm folding. That goes to the inside of the card. Then I just go like that with my bone folder. And what the difference is, is if you fold towards the mountain, there is less chance of breakage on this outer edge. And... I've been doing it that way for years and I really have never had that breakage. However, I've gotten cards in swaps that maybe fold the opposite way towards the valley and there's a lot of times there's breakage and I think, eh, I bet they didn't fold towards the mountain. But you know, all right. So then let's go ahead and do our inside panels because we want to do those too. So those are basic white, four by five and a quarter. And then I've got some little strips of that same design because you know how I am. I like to have what's on the outside kind of like transferred to the inside as well. So we'll do that. So we're going to take these four by five and a quarter inch strips uh, or five by quarter, four by five and a quarter inch panels. And we're going to um, glue these little accent strips. And we're just going to put those right here on the left side. And you just want it so the left, the top, and the bottom are all pretty even. Did I say how big these strips were? One half inch by three and three fourths. I can't remember if I said that or not. There we go. There we go, it looks great. Okay, now we're gonna take um, the sentiment for the inside, because happy birthday, what can be better thoughts? What can be happier than a happy birthday? So we're gonna use the sentiment, just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way. So we're gonna take the stays on again, ink that up, and we'll just set this in like so. Oh, look at how pretty that turned out. Look at that beautiful font, just Fabulous. I love it when Stampin' Up! mixes two different styles of font together. I just think it's so incredibly pretty. All right, then we're going to get this out of the way and put it onto the inside panels of our card. Look, you guys, I have a little tiny new ring. Do you like it? It's my grandma's. Remember how I was telling you it was my grandma's birthday, uh, March 2nd? She would have been 109. Well, my, my dad had given me grandma's ring. Oh my gosh, it's been like 2008, I think he gave it to me. And then I put it in a safe place. Have you guys ever done that? I didn't find it for years. So if he gave it to me in 2008, 18, 19, 20, 20 it took 13 years for me to figure out where I had put it. <laughs> I only found it when I was cleaning some cabinets. And I finally found it. And I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to put anything in a safe place again. <laughs> but anyway, now that I have it, now that I found it after 13 years, I'm so excited to wear it. The problem is she had the tiniest fingers, oh, oh, the tiniest, tiniest fingers you've ever seen in your life. I mean, look. I can barely, you know, it barely fits on my ring finger, just to show you. I did not inherit the tiny jeans from my grandma. Um, but yeah, she was so little, she had trouble finding shoes. Uh, they were always too big on her. In fact, she would wear, well, galoshes, I guess, fit over your shoes, but 
I remember one time when she was like in her 90s, she couldn't find galoshes. Well, I don't even know if they make galoshes anymore, but she couldn't find them. And they were all too big for her feet and blah, blah, blah. I just remember her having just such a fit about it. Oh, goodness. All right. So here we, I'm sorry I went off on a tangent, but I'm just so excited to share with you that that sweet little ring that I inherited from, from, my, from my grandma. All right, let's see. Now we're going to take all this stuff here. And let's, let's, um, let's go ahead and put these on the front panels. So where's my, here we go. We're going to glue these down. Because the wrap is done. We don't have to worry about wrapping anything else around. And we'll set this in like so. I'm just wiggling it into place to get everything kind of even. We'll do the same thing with this one. I'm so excited about my team meeting tonight, though. We usually do it the second Thursday of every month. Um, so that's kind of why I don't get other things done on team meeting week. I don't always get my customer newsletter out as timely and all that stuff that I normally do because... I have so much fun prepping for my team meeting that I don't want to do anything else. It's just great fun. All right, so now we're going to flip these over, add some dimensionals. Yes, I'm still peeling them off. I will do a video very soon on how to make that little where they're all ready to go. Just haven't done it yet. You know, there's just only so much time in the day. All right, so here we go. We've got the happy birthday. We're putting it so there's just a peak of the ribbon showing on the right side. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. Oh, my kitty is right outside the window, Mr. S'more. He's wondering why I'm not letting him in. He's kind of giving me the look like, what the heck? I'm wanting to come in and you're ignoring me. Well, he's just going to have to be ignored a little bit longer. All right, so we have it done this far. Now we're going to take these two, these two uh, bundles of flowers here, just beautiful. And I think I'm going to just put the dimensionals right here because I'm not really sure where the dimensionals are going to fall when I just put it on the back of the flowers. So I know for sure where I want the flowers. I'm just not sure where I want the dimensionals, but I know the dimensionals are gonna go about right here. So we're just gonna go that way. We're just gonna do it this way. So I'm putting the dimensionals on either side of the ribbon. And then once I take the peelies off, we'll just put the flower right over the top of the dimensionals. Those flowers are big enough that I don't need to worry about whether or not the dimensionals are gonna show through because I know they're not. Are you guys loving this card? Isn't it just, just beautiful? I know. I know I always say this, but I feel like I'm making my favorite card ever. <laughs> All right. So here's here's the flower that's the two, the two set we put together to make it look like one. And we're going to set this in... Because what I want is I want the I want the leaves kind of going up over the happy birthday here. So there's the first one. And then here's the second one. This one's a little less complicated because the I can't fiddle with the flowers. They're all ready together. So this one will set in just like this. And that one was easy peasy. So there they are. Just gorgeous. Don't you just don't you just love it? One last thing to really up our game is we're going to take these pretty little seaside spray butterflies and I've got the trusty take your pick tool here. And we're just going to grab one and we'll put one right here. So I'll grab another, put another right here, kind of just a little off center and to the right on where the sentiment is. And then we're going to add one right up here in this little area right there. So it's in that little peak where the flowers sort of come together. Do the same thing over here. And then we need one more on each card because it's a good idea to do 
uh, sets of three or five, always an odd number when you're when you're embellishing your cards. So we'll just do one kind of going off this direction up towards the top. And get one more here. And we'll set it right here. Oh my gosh, just perfect. All right, here are the cards. Thank you everybody for joining me today. It was just a pleasure to be here. We'll see you all soon. Bye everybody.